Banner of the Maid is a tactical RPG set in a historical context. It's the Final Fantasy tactics set during the French Revolution. With classic gameplay, great artwork and satisfying price, this looks set to be a top tier indie on the Switch. Let me tell you why. The story stars a young female officer in the French army, Pauline, sister to none other than the acclaimed General Napoleon. Yes, she was a real person, but true to history, this game is not. Despite being an officer, she doubts her own ability and so joins her brother in Paris and then on his expeditions. She meets up with Napoleon's Josephine, who then tries to help her standing in different social circles, the royalist political parties and a few others. Over the course of the game, she gains more and more reputation and is claimed to be one of the maids, an almost supernatural female with the ability to steer the country on the right path and save it from chaos and destruction. Powerful women are a theme of this game, with many of the generals and main players being female, and I really like the Jean d'Arc reverence found with them. The story as a whole is quite serviceable, quite enjoyable at times, although slightly meandering at others. The story often switches between the front lines and all the political goings on in the capital with Madame Josephine, the politicians, the generals, and the royalty. I think it could have been more focused and have more intrigue, but you know, it's still enjoyable. I also much preferred it when the story elements were told in the battle segments rather than during the visual novel style that it often was. Static backgrounds and static character art can only keep me engaged for so long unless it's a really good story. Overall, the story is good, but it had the potential to be better if it was more focused. Banner of the Maid is a turn-based strategy RPG set on a grid. Despite its looks and feel, it plays more like a Fire Emblem Super Robot Wars type, rather than Final Fantasy Tactics. In the essence that turns aren't based on a speed start. This is where you move all your troops first, do all their actions, end your turn, and then the enemy does their thing. As I said a dozen times already, it's not my favourite, as I do find the Final Fantasy Tactics approach more tactical, but that's just a matter of opinion. I get that people enjoy the more control they have with this style. Banner of the Maid has a rock, paper, scissors style mechanic whereby unit styles are more effective or weaker against others. However, due to the unit types and equipped weapons here, it's not so immediately intuitive as to which trumps which. You have a couple of gun types which have different matchups, but they're visually very, like, the same to me. So I did have trouble learning which works best against which, even right up to the end of the game. It's not the end of the world, however, as you can always cancel your movement if you've mistakenly headed to the wrong enemy type. There are loads of abilities that can be learned and equipped, and they really open up the tactical nature and turn what was previously a duff unit into something very useful. It's a lot of fun developing your characters as the story goes along, and meeting new characters to add to your party is always bliss, as there are really some great personalities here. Very memorable people will join your squad, and I know I will remember them long after I finish with this game. In battle, each of your units has their own morale meter, which goes up as you duke it out. Once it reaches the top, it gives your unit a chance to initiate a heroic nature, which will boost their stats for one round, which can really help out in a pinch, especially towards the end of the battle, when it's you versus the enemy general, who is by far and away more powerful than any of his grunts. One of your units cannot take them on alone, they'll quickly be decimated. That's what makes the final parts of the battle so tense. You're often running low on supplies, health and turns. There's only one enemy left, but he or she is a bad mofo, so you'll need to be piling on them to take them down as quickly as possible, using all your abilities at the final push. Love it. I really enjoyed the way they implemented the historical period with the usual fantasy or sci-fi tropes. For example, the white mage here is actually a musician who drums or trumpets on the battlefield to raise morale and heal troops. It may sound small, but it's attention to detail like that which really made me appreciate the effort and love put into this game. What I really like is the difficulty balance. Unlike Super Robot Wars, which is one of the easiest games of the genre, although I do love them because I'm incredibly shallow for the mind-blowing battle animations, uh, Banner of the Maid pretty much nails the difficulty curve. It's not an easy game, nor is it brutally difficult unless you want it to be. It offers a very steady, thoughtful challenge where each battle puts you up against it, but with some considered tactics you will come out on top. Enemies can hit hard, reinforcements can be a nuisance, and victory requirements can be squeamishly tight, but I loved it. I never let my guard down, nor did I cry out that it's unfair. And that's very rare in a game like this, especially of indie origins. There are a few difficulty options, you can tone it down if it's a bit too tough for you, or you can try your hand at being a badass tactical genius and crank it up. Personally, I went with the standard in the middle and found it pretty much spot on. 
It's also worth noting that there is no permadeath. If your unit is wiped out, you'll just retreat. I know some people despise that aspect, while others love it, so I thought I'd just put it out there, just so you know what you're getting. I think what makes it so balanced is the fact that every battle is almost like a puzzle. Not restrictive in the sense of there being only one solution, but there is definitely like a right way to head. There's often always a gimmick that needs to be exploited that will help you out. There's always a main goal to victory or an alternative victory option which will truly test your tactical skills. One early example is where there are two routes to take. One where you can slowly work your way around the battlefield and pick off enemies, or you can just bust down the door, charge straight to the enemy general for a quick victory and earn a reward. But that's if you manage to not get surrounded and beaten to a pulp, like I did five times trying. Yeah, it was too tough for me and I resorted to the recommended way after a few tries. One thing I haven't talked about much is what goes on outside of battle, because there's actually a fairly important aspect here. It's not complicated, but there's a reputation system in place with various factions around Paris. Royalty, the citizens, the military, and so on. There's only a handful, but at various points during the story, you're often asked to provide a solution to a problem, or at least your opinion on the matter. Perhaps there's a debate about whether to have some people executed or let free. Each of the answers is more in line with the thoughts of one particular faction, and choosing that one will increase your reputation with them. Level up your reputation, and you're granted more items and weapons to buy from said faction. Thankfully, your reputation does not decrease with a faction if you ignore them, so there's no real worry, but it is nice knowing if you want to focus on the faction that will sell you better swords, or perhaps the faction that will allow you to increase your skills of your officers, or perhaps the one that will sell you better cannonballs. It's nice to know where you're going to focus. Like I said, this is simple, but it just adds enough gameplayness and involvement into something that would otherwise be a very dry affair that makes it very commendable. You can also increase your reputations with factions by doing specific side quests for them, which end up being even more puzzle-like than the battles for the main story. Now, I've gushed all about this game so far, and for good reason, it's pretty amazing. It's not perfect though, of course. As stated, I think the story gets slightly bogged down in places. More of the story could have played out on the battlefield. Some of the goals may cross over to slightly frustrating side. I don't think it does anything particularly revolutionary. It's just learned from the masters and done them very well. More attack variation and units would not have gone amiss either. As cool as they look, they can get a little repetitive. But you know, it is an indie game. I'm just shocked that it has this much detail to begin with. In terms of audio, I think that Ban of the Maid offers something quite unique. There's lots of French and sort of Baroque styles that you'd find around the time, I think. I wouldn't say Baroque is my preferred choice of sound, it's a bit kind of whimsical for me, but it suits the theme down to the ground. The battle theme is fairly catchy too, although I can't say I will remember it after I put the game to bed. The music does its job, and I can't say much more than that. I really wish it was next level stuff that could be implanted into my brain forever, but sadly it's not. It just does the job fine. The composer was paid to do a job, and a job they did do. In terms of voice acting, well, for me it's very interesting. There is very little, only in the battle cries that issue before an attack. As someone who's living in China and can speak Mandarin relatively okay-ish, I suppose, not really, it was nice to hear the voice acting being completely Chinese, even if it is slightly amusing coming from a French person. Obviously, battle cries haven't really been on my study curriculum for Chinese, so much of it did pass me by, but it's still a lot of fun to hear, and it was very professionally done, I would say. I mean, I know Kai Hua, which, you know, it's always fun to hear. The visuals are one of the aspects that I really love about Banner of the Maid. I think they've really brought the isometric strategy RPG to what it should be today without going over the top and reinventing the wheel. It takes the classic visuals that we're used to, but touches them up enough that you still get a warmly feeling and consider that it could have been done like this back in the day. But the polish sets it apart from the past. Sprite work is fantastic with so much detail and roundness to them. The animation frames are great and although there may not be a huge amount of variety for the budget and scope, I think it's overall a very good looking game for the genre. The artwork for the characters is fantastic and you know what I mean. Napoleon has never looked so damn sexy. In all seriousness, just about everything about them in their designs and uniqueness, the character artwork really helped draw me into the game and care about the story and characters. Honestly, I will remember these people for a long time to come. It's really top notch, high quality, highly detailed. My only gripe are a game with the visual novel style elements, where the backgrounds, as beautiful and as detailed as they are, are just a little repetitive. I think more could have been done. More backgrounds, or at least minor alterations on existing backgrounds, that would have been a lot more appreciated. 
Even just flipping an image horizontally to give the feeling of Paris being different to another city's streets could have gone a long, long way. This is not a major complaint in the slightest, by the way, and it is being nitpicky. But I think developers do appreciate these smaller criticisms in order to, you know, help improve their craft. In terms of value, Banner of the Maid is an incredible $16.99 in the US and Europe and £15 in the UK, which I think is a bargain for what's being offered here. You're looking at a very meaty campaign. Honestly, I don't know how long it took me, but I would guess like 30 hours, although that's including a lot of restarts and failures and trying to get some of the challenges. Although by no means did I do everything this game has to offer. I didn't try the harder difficulties nor New Game Plus. I can't say for sure how long it took me because it's one of those annoying things where the in-game timer seems to carry on even when you put the Switch into sleep mode. It makes clocking in a real pain in my backside. Either way, I think this is very good value for your Switch. Overall, as you can probably tell now, Banner of the Maid is a game that I very, very much recommend to those wanting to scratch that Final Fantasy Tactics itch. If you're not into the genre already, then this is probably not going to change your mind in any way. Please don't get me wrong about that. It does tread on old ground, but it does so incredibly well. If you're into tactics, for me, then there is no doubt about this one. While many games aspire to the same heights as the legendary Square Enix game, very few actually make it this far even more amazing for the fact that it's an indie game. It's put together with love, with classic gameplay, gorgeous pixel art and animation, bursting with personality, a stern but doable challenge and a price tag that feels lower than it should be. It's one of my favorite games of the year so far. It's a nine out of 10. Thank you ever so much for watching this review, especially if you made it all the way here. The longer you watch, the more it helps us out. Big love to our subscribers and our YouTube members and our executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, Ganicus, God of Resin, Jonathan Rumor, and Brent McLean. Thank you for your incredible support. Be sure to check out some of our other recent content. We would not want you to miss out. So we'll see you guys over there. Take care. Goodbye.